considered the effects of a and q on the graphs of the trig functions and now we're going to have a look at how we work with the equations of the trig functions. Number one, I'd like for you to pause the video and to try these on your own and then check your answers from the video. On separate axes, sketch the graphs y equals 2 sine x, x is an element of negative 180 to positive 180. Okay, so the graph 2 sine x is change, has changed the amplitude of the parent graph y equals sine x from 1 to 2. So what we know is that the range of that graph is now going to be from negative 2 to 2, okay? Because we are sketching the graph y is equal to 2 sine x. So the graph y equals sine x will have a point at 0 and 0. Then the normal, the parent graph, has a point at 90 and 1. So the graph 2 sine x will have a point at 90 and 2 because we're stretching the amplitude of the graph. And then at 180, it will be 0 again. If we go on the left-hand side, negative 90 normally has a point at negative 1 on the parent graph, but because we are sketching the graph 2 sine x, it will have a point at negative 2. And then at negative 180, it will be 0 again. So the graph of 2 sine x will look like this. Okay, and don't forget to give your graph a label. Okay, number B, y is equal to tan of x minus 1, and we are also sketching it for the domain negative 180 to 180. So the parent function is y is equal to tan of x. If we are minusing 1, it means that we are shifting that graph one unit down. Okay, so if we just think of what our standard tan graph would look like, we know that it will have asymptotes at 90 degrees, and then every 180 degrees from 90 degrees. So 180 degrees in the positive direction is 270, which is outside of our domain. So the other asymptote that we need is the one at negative 90 degrees. Okay, the graph y is equal to tan x has a point at 45 degrees and positive 1. If we shift that down, it will have a point at 45 degrees and 0. The parent graph y equals tan x has a point at the origin. If we shift that one unit down, it will now be at negative 1. And the point at negative 45 degrees shifted one unit down is now at negative 2. So the graph of tan x minus 1 looks like this. Okay, and then if we, um, we have now an asymptote at 90, again, the point at 180 will now be at negative 1. If you want to find the point, the next, the point is, the, well, the next value will be 135. The tan of 135 is negative 1, shifted 1 unit down, shifts it to negative 2. So we are just looking at that bottom half of the tan graph. Here on the left hand side at negative 180, the tan of, of negative 180 is 0, but we're shifting the graph down by 1 unit, so the point will land up at a negative 180 and negative 1. And if we plot the point at negative 135, the tan of negative 135 is positive 1. We are shifting that 1 unit down, so it will be at 0. So we are looking at that half of that tan graph. Okay, number two, find the equation of f if f of x is equal to a cos x plus q. So now we need to look at this graph and we need to see if we can figure out what the values of a and q are. Now we know that the a is on a cos graph is the amplitude and we can calculate that by finding the difference between the maximum y and the minimum y and dividing it by 2. So the maximum y is 3. The minimum y here is negative 1, so that will be 3 plus 1, minusing negative 1 is the same as adding 1. 3 plus 1 is 4, 4 divided by 2 is 2. So we already know that the a value is 2. But the graph, if we were just sketching the graph of 2 cos x, it would have its maximum point at 2 and its minimum point at negative 2. But we can see that we have our minimum at negative 1 and our maximum at 3. 
which tells us that we've moved the graph one unit up. So the equation for f of x will be 2 cos x plus 1 